Hello there, it's Scott Severite here again, and another one of those videos that I've been doing, uh, just for the Agile community, around about uh, the preparations that we're doing in, in, in trying to make an ex something exciting happen um, for the anniversary next year of 20 years of Agile since the Agile Manifesto. Uh, one of the key people that I've been talking to when thinking about how to make a very inclusive and very open um, um, event that everyone would like to come to uh, is uh, has been Daniel Mezik. So I'm going to introduce Daniel in a, in a second. Uh, the topic I'd really like to cover today is invitation, why it's important. Daniel wrote the excellent book, uh, Inviting Leadership, uh, which I yeah, which I have on Kindle. It's one of the few books I'll actually go on Kindle to get. I just love the diagrams and things. Um, so, uh, you know, welcome, welcome, Daniel. Uh, yeah, thanks for thanks for all the work you've done in open space and inviting. So, if you don't want to, if you want to kind of tell uh, perhaps those not so not so familiar with your work, uh, you know who you are and uh, and what you've been up to, and then we ah. can talk about inviting. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah, thanks. Happy to do that. Thanks for your welcome. Uh, and I also wish to say to the folks that are listening that the book is co-authored with my colleague Mark Sheffield. So the two of us wrote the book together, um, and I'm grateful to Mark uh, for that. So so here's the story. Um, I spent, uh, I have a computer science degree. I spent five to six years of my career in large organizations and I became a consultant for about 10 years. And then around 2006, I got into this agile thing. And since then I've been, I've written three books on organizational change. And uh, I've also um, consulted to about 60 organizations, I believe since then. Um, and it seems like every five years, I look back on the previous five years and I, I realize that most of what I believed five years ago is, was completely wrong. So uh, that's a little bit about me. Um, my passion now is around uh, human agency, opt-in participation, specifically through the mechanism of invitation in terms of uh, creating meaningful and positive change in organization. Hi, Shelby. Hi. Uh we're just having a we're just doing a little video with uh, with Daniel, um, so I, I invite you to listen. Uh, Daniel's telling us about inviting. I'll, um, I just seen the link, so I thought it'd think I thought it was something now. So I'll love you and leave you and let you crack on. Nice to speak to you, Daniel. I'm sure I'll speak to you again. Scott, I'll speak to you later. Okay. You can edit Wait. that. You can edit that one out, Shelby. I will. <laughs> Shelby out. Yeah. So, so um, in the current day, I I, uh, I uh, consult to executives and their organizations about how to create meaningful and lasting change that improves and leads to positive business outcomes. That's my thing. So I do a lot of teaching, I do a lot of writing, and I do a lot of consulting. Excellent. Um, so one of the things I want to do is make this inclusive um, as as an event, um, and I want to and I and I also want to invite people to come with their creativity. I want people to and yeah. You know, the energy that you would get in an open space where people have the marketplace and then people coalesce around about different ideas and, and, and there's not a lot of central structure, there's not a lot of central direction as to what's happening. Um, and, and, and we really, you know, people can really, you know, uh, ideate and come up with their dreams and then invite others to, to help them. So I think inviting is going to be everywhere. So so tell me about, tell me what you think about inviting an invitation. Yeah, so inviting is something that actually gets into the head of the receiver. So if you really want to get in someone's head, you can invite them. So if you'd like, I could share a screen. You'd have to, sh you'd have to enable or authorize that screen sharing for me. Excellent. And then I, that's, I an opportunity. that's an opportunity to learn. Um, yeah, just let me know and I can do it. And I'll show you this little picture of what it means uh, to get into the head of someone with an invitation. Cool. So I do, do I go into participants here and... Uh... I'll, you know what? I'm going to make you host. You have all the power now. Sure. I've, invite, I've invited you to lead. So here we go. This is something to think about. When you invite something, you are prompting for a decision, a yes or a no or a maybe. And the person uh, is in charge of what happens next. The receiver is in charge. So in this diagram, the sender sends an invitation, you're invited, the receiver receives it, and then this cloud represents what's going on in their brain as they think about what they're going to do as they process this thing and decide what to do with it. 
they receive the envelope and they open it, so to speak, and, and they start thinking, you know, who, who else, say it's a group, say it's a large group event that the, a highly authorized leader is inviting you into. The questions that you might be asking are, is my friend Scott going? Is his boss going? Is my boss going? If I don't go, what will I miss? If I do go, what will I learn? Will it be boring? Will it be exciting? I have no idea. What happens? How long do I have to answer? All these things get into the head of the sender, okay? I'm, I'm sorry, into the head of the receiver, which makes invitations incredibly engaging. Ah, so now like, activity. I like it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So now I'd like to kind of get, show you a stack of of uh, of, uh, of things that are dependent on each other, and this this is uh, my hypothesis of how things actually work. So in the beginning, you get invited, and you receive an invitation, and it's sitting there, and you open it. Now the th the thing that's key about an invitation is you can opt out. Yes. Yes. You do not have to say yes. And a true invitation means you can opt out with no sanctions. There are no negative consequences to saying no to a legitimate invitation. So right off the bat, choice is involved. Human agency is at play. And uh, Scott, you and I both know Harrison Owen, and Harrison Owen will tell you that all systems are open and all systems are self-organizing. And human agency is at the heart of human social self-organization, right? So invitation triggers this human agency because there's no sanctions for opting out. Now, when you receive that invitation, you are put on a decision, but you're in control of when you respond, how you respond, what medium you respond over. Is it a yes and no, a maybe? Is it a passive no where you just don't answer? Is it an active no where you give the 10 reasons why? Or is it something in between? All of that is under the authority of the receiver. So the receiver is in charge of what happens next. This act actually turns out to be very, very engaging. If you go to the Gallup data, okay. engagement is associated with every good thing. Higher morale, easier talent acquisition and retention, uh, positive business outcomes. Employee engagement is actually essential to anything good that's going to happen. You'll never see a spirited organization that isn't engaged. So this engagement is an engagement in deciding. It turns out that deciding and engaging are related. One follows the other. Invitation leads to deciding. Deciding leads to engagement in the decision, at least. And then the next thing that happens is people begin to self-manage their decisions. When we talk about self-management in organizations, what we're really talking about is the management of decisions. So by inviting and keep leaving it open for people to decide, we're training people in how to self-manage. I like that. I like so that. Self-management is about the self-management of decisions. Now, self-management is associated with incredibly positive business outcomes. So the reason why we want to invite is because we want those outcomes and we get them through self-management, through employee engagement and through their, their faculty of deciding, which we're authorizing as leaders. We're prompting them with, to respond with a yes or no or a maybe. So at the end of the day, this is what a good invitation looks like. A good invitation makes it really clear what's in it for the receiver, makes it really clear what the constraints are, and also makes it really clear how we're going to experience progress. That's really, really critically important. And then finally, opt-in participation is yeah. essential to any good invite. So in the book, Inviting Leadership, we talk about this stuff. We give you tools and techniques and, and resources that can help you to um, incorporate some invitations into those delegations and to make things, to open about this much space so people can feel a little bit more in control of what's about to happen. Yeah. I, I must admit, I'm really excited that uh, I put some invitations out 
and some people came back and some people didn't come back. Right. One, one, one person came back and said, I'm going to say no, but I might regret it. And I said, well, it's an open invitation. So why don't you see what gets developed and wait to the, la you know, wait to the latest responsible moment? <laughs> right. So technically what you're saying is the constraint is the last responsible moment, which is the first responsible moment minus one. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think the other thing is that uh, as we've pulled together the designers and we've got quite a lot of designers and some are more active than others and many are it's like a, i think it's like a high school dance so there's a little bit of uh, uh waiting to see who goes to dance first and who's dancing and who's on the dance floor you know because you might not want to right. go when someone else is there yeah um, but but what i'm really excited about is the energy that, that everyone's brought and uh, and i think that that is just into the invitation model there um and and if we when we get sub teams and sub teams start forming around about you know uh, delivering things people are passionate about, I mean, I mean again, it, you know, don't I don't really don't want these to feel like work. I want these to feel like you know people are invited to come and play. Sure. So let's discuss that for a minute. This whole idea of passion, right? So Harrison Owen uh, is fond of creating these slogans. One of them is, "Without passion, nobody cares." And then the second part of that is without responsibility, nothing gets done. So you need passion <laughs> and responsibility together. Yeah. Right. Passion without responsibility is, Hey, the yard's a mess. Why don't you clean it up? That's passion without responsibility. Right. And then responsibility without passion. That's just obligation. I don't want to do it, but I have to. Yeah, right. Excellent. Passion and responsibility together is extremely powerful. Now, the way that you find out who the passionate and responsible are is by inviting them. Yes. Yeah. And, and I, I'm predicting as well there's going to be a snowball effect here that as, as people can actually see more things evolve and, and it becomes, I like to think of this as a, we're building a little bit of a skeleton and this, well, maybe we've got this, a little bit of the spine going, but we haven't got, you know, we're, we're not quite up to arms and shoulders and things. And as, and as, as the muscles start forming around about that and everyone can see it easier i think i think there's going to be a yeah a lot more participation i think yeah yeah so this is this is like a very interesting idea you know um that what you put together now concerning agile great agile runs on frequent feedback yes now invitation generates a lot of feedback because this the receiver is in charge of how they respond when they respond what medium they respond over what is the content of their response and so forth right so this is a whole bunch of data for for the leader or the organizers or the people who are making high you know higher authorization level decisions you can make better decisions when you have lots of feedback so in, inviting is an inherently agile approach Excellent. Anyway, thanks, thanks, uh, thanks for doing this. I'm glad I invited you along. <laughs> My pleasure. And, and it was a great chat. And, and I might even leave Shelby in. <laughs> okay, well, she was in and then she was out. Yeah. Testing the link for the uh, for the first meeting tonight, which is the first meeting of the group. Uh, I think everyone's a little bit excited, so I can understand people testing links early. Uh, now that's wonderful. Thank you very much, um, and uh, we'll see you later. You're welcome, sir.